There's just something exciting about the words buried treasure. Today, we're investigating several places around the US where fantastic jewels and gems may actually be hidden. As they're handed down over the years, tales of treasure often become a wild stew of historical facts and local legends. We'll give you a bit of both and let you be the judge. Our first stop, a desert in Southern California where a missing treasure ship filled with rare pearls is said to be buried deep beneath the shifting sand. A little background, pearls were a really big deal with European royals in the Middle Ages. They were so prized that when Ferdinand and Isabella sent Columbus off on his first expedition, they made a list of goodies that they'd hoped he'd bring back. Pearls were at the very top. Though he'd go down in history for discovering a new continent, Columbus didn't have quite as much luck in the pearl department. But hey, it was the age of exploration, so Spain just kept on exploring. In 1535, Hernán Cortés sailed up the western coast of present-day Mexico, where native lore told of an island of Amazon warrior women who wore nothing but pearls. He didn't find the island, but how awesome would that story have been? His search wasn't totally in vain, though. He did find fantastic dark pearls in the waters just north of La Paz. An oyster native to this area called the Pintada Mazatlánica produced particularly fine large pearls with a silver to dark gray body color and beautiful overtones of blue, lavender, and green. Of course, like any good monarch, the Spanish king wanted mas, and so the story goes that in 1610 he ordered a new expedition along the same coast. Three new ships set out with 60 experienced pearl divers. Juan de Iturbe captained one of the vessels. It started off like the ultimate historic haul. The ocean conditions here, stable temperatures and clear nutrient-rich waters, favored the development of pearl oysters with a particularly high yield of quality pearls, as much as 6%. The Spanish were loading up on pearls, but a fight with natives sidelined one ship while another hit a reef and sank. Only Iturbe's ship remained, riding dangerously low in the water due to the weight of its many pearls. But he pressed on further north, seeking more riches. He sailed from the Gulf of California and into the turbulent Colorado River, and through a narrow passage into what appeared to be a large inland sea. Mm -mm, big mistake. Sailing around this sea for weeks looking for oyster beds, he discovered it was only a shallow body of water created by the Colorado overflowing its banks. By the time he turned around, he was in for a little surprise. The water level had fallen, and the way back to the river was now totally blocked by a sandbar. The Spanish spent days looking for a way out, but there just wasn't any. Intense evaporation in this region meant that they were trapped in a sea that was slowly disappearing. Oof, talk about a sinking feeling. They had to abandon ship and strike out across the arid plains. Those who survived were picked up months later by another Spanish ship in the Gulf. Iturbe was never able to raise funds to go back for his stranded vessel, and in the many years since, there have been several reported sightings of a large ship buried in the sands of the Colorado Desert just below the Salton Sea. Nearby Pinto Canyon even has a strange rock carving that appears to depict a large ship of its kind but no expedition has ever been able to locate it. Could this ship with its payload of pearls still be out there today, buried beneath the sand? For our next missing jewel, we're going cross country, all the way to the wilds of the northeastern US, where a 10 pound silver Madonna statue is thought to be lost, along with other spoils from a dark chapter in history. Due to its malleability, silver has been used in detailed sculpture work dating back to ancient times. In the Hellenistic period, it became a popular medium for statues of figures for worship. Our story begins during the French and Indian War with a motley crew of frontiersmen dubbed Rogers Rangers. They worked for the British Army, raiding enemy villages. Basically lots of looting and killing. Hey, history is like that sometimes. In 1759, the Rangers attacked the Abenaki village of St. Francis just across the Canadian border. They snuck in through the forest at night and struck at the first light of dawn, killing everyone and burning their houses. Like I said, history can be dark. Then they looted the church, taking golden chalices, silver crosses, a huge ruby ring, as well as a special two foot tall statue of the Virgin Mary. Crowned with a rosette and holding an infant Jesus, the statue was supposedly crafted of native silver and given to the Abenaki as a gift from the Jesuits. After packing up their booty, the rangers fled to their waiting boats, only to discover that the French had destroyed them. History was about to take a turn on these fine gentlemen. They split up and fled on foot through the Vermont woods with a large force of French soldiers and Indian warriors in pursuit. The group carrying the Silver Madonna were picked off one by one, and by the time they reached the Connecticut River, they were down to just four men and heavily regretting that they filled their knapsacks with a bunch of cool stuff that they couldn't eat. 
They entered New Hampshire following the Israel River into the foothills of the White Mountains. Here, delirium took hold. The story goes that they began to blame the Madonna statue for all their troubles and threw it in the river. I guess they'd never heard of karma. Given the weight of the statue and the specific gravity of silver, it's likely that it would have sank into the mud and gravel at the bottom of the river. Though it's never been located, other treasures from the ranger's flight have been found scattered throughout the region, like little breadcrumbs. In 1816, a farmer plowed into a pair of golden candlesticks, and in 1828, a chainmail shirt was found in the hollow of a rotted birch tree. Could the silver Madonna turn up one day as well? Finally, let's head to Oregon and meet one of the most famous prospectors of all time, Ed Shefflin. You never heard of Ed Shefflin? Well, maybe you've heard of Tombstone, Arizona. In the late 1800s, it was the biggest town from New Orleans to San Francisco, largely due to a silver boom instigated by our buddy Ed. You see, in 1877, by examining faults and sink lines, Ed discovered ledges of silver deep within dangerous Apache territory. It was a place that he was once warned would lead to his tombstone if he continued to prospect the area. Hence the name. Selling his claim made him very wealthy, but he just couldn't shake the prospecting bug. In 1895, he went to Oregon. Encouraged by placer gold, that is gold found by panning in streams, near the South Umpqua River, Ed thought he could find a mother load in the rock nearby. What he found was a thick vein of rust-colored quartz intruding through the granite of a nearby ledge. Digging even further yielded blue-tinted quartz flecked with gold. He reportedly mailed a letter to a friend that read, I found stuff here in Oregon that'll make tombstone look like salt. But only a couple of weeks later, he was found dead in his cabin. The official cause was ruled a heart attack, but others believe that the chemicals he used in prospecting had a hand in it. In those days, cyanide and mercury were frequently used to liquefy gold and separate it from lower grade ore. Oof, talk about a toxic work environment. Ed's trough of samples held several gold pieces of high value. It was enough to convince his brothers to immediately come to the area and search for his vein of blue quartz. But despite their best efforts, it was never found. Could it be out there still? And could Ed have been right about its potential? These are just a few of the many legendary treasures thought to be located around the United States. Are any of these in your neck of the woods? Where would you like us to go next? Let me know down in the comments, and please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell while you're down there. Thanks for watching.